Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter and I'm an artist and previously for 28 years I was a science teacher. Yes, it doesn't seem to fit but it does because close observation, sort of like cutting illustrations or drawings, diagrams down to the bare bones is the lifeblood of scientists. And so I've always drawn in a very stylized way, I suppose, without realizing it. But I do like quite stylized drawings. I like things that are fairly abstract. And I definitely love whimsy. Whimsy and cute, because you can't have enough of it in a world that we live in. And it's nice to have a bit of an escape. Um, and being an ex-teacher means that I love to try to encourage others and show others ways that you can break down the process of drawing. I don't pretend to be skilled in highly detailed drawings or photographic drawings or anything like that, but I know my kind of whimsical art, what I like to draw, and if I can encourage people and get people to try their hand at something similar in their own way and give you the confidence to know what to do, how to look at things in terms of simple lines and shapes and pair things back to the bare minimum then and, and to enjoy it then I'm doing a good job here and I think that may be my purpose more than anything else on YouTube. I have other purposes but not on YouTube maybe. So welcome to my channel it's Saturday it's the 16th of April and it's not far off 10 o'clock in the morning here in the valleys of South Wales We've got high mist, I think, or light clouds, and the sun's trying to peek its way through, but hopefully it'll behave itself long enough for me to do a fairly short, well, I say this, I'm going to try to make this a short video, the chances are it won't, you know me, I get carried away. So yesterday, my, on my last video, because I don't know when you're watching this, yesterday for me, my last video for everybody else, I was um, looking at drawing sand dollars or sea urchins and um, scallop shells. Is it scallops? Yeah, scallop shells or cockle shells with you in a very stylized way. And I like to do them so that I can fill spaces with pattern. And that there's a reason why. Because the pattern adds the texture and the density of line and shadow so that my not brilliant skills with colour it doesn't matter how much I learn, how much I try, that just does not change. The, the pattern adds what other people can do with colour, I suppose. So, I mean, you know, horses for courses, isn't it? And um, this is what I like to do. So, if you watched yesterday's video, you may recognise some of these and you may notice I've added some more along the bottom here and added some pattern to them just to see what would happen. I haven't added colour yet but one day I most probably will maybe today I don't know yet we'll see what the day brings but I also went on to another page and these are all based on the same idea of that sand dollar a circle five sections in between often put lines or shapes in to divide them up and then just see how it goes some of these I like, some of them I'm not so fussed on, some I may never use again, some I will. And several months down the road, if I look back at this, I might go, oh, I really like that one now and make use of that. Sketchbooks are wonderful places I'm discovering. Well, I've always had a notebook where I keep things in, but it tends to be this is how I draw this and I leave it there. And I've never really worked with variations in a focused way. I'll vary things as I draw them for colouring templates and, so, and drawings and so on. But the sketchbook, this is driving me thanks to the Inktober Tangle Pattern Challenge, thanks to the Fragments of Your Imagination Challenge um, with seven, five forests, seven rivers. Um, I, I'll try and remember their name and put them in, in the list. Oh, in the, the description below and working with variations has shown me the value of this and also keeping sketchbooks as, as resources I can look back on for ideas for things that I can use later on. Not that I do that very often but I have them here available to me 
So this is these, these small variations. And I also went on to look at some shells. As you can see here, these are kind of mussel shells and oysterish shells. This is actually based on a zentangle pattern called oysteroid and some spiral shells, not too many of them, things that look like barnacles or limpets. And then I had to look at um, starfish here and some more oyster shells and some other clam shells there. So I'm going to do some of these things with you. I think we'll have a look at starfish today because who doesn't love a starfish? Well, I'm sure there are some people who don't, but I think you'll find them a lot easier to draw than you think. Um, I'm going to start using a pencil to draw in my, my guidelines because I find guidelines really useful and I tend to draw my, I draw my pencil lines quite light with a light hand because it makes them easier to erase. Um, I can, if I'm scanning something in digitally, I can erase things digitally, but um, not always. So I'm going to put a centre point here, somewhere vaguely near the centre, and then I'm going to lightly draw five lines, roughly equal, equal, you know, equidistant. I've got a bigger section here, but I'm not too worried about this. And I'm also going to put a second circle inside the first. I'm not going over the top to try to get this exactly right or you know exactly the same distance all the way around. It's just a guide. And for my first one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a curve that goes in this shape. It's kind of a strange shaped U. Um, the ends of the U are wide, shallow U with the ends curling over a little bit. So I'm going to aim towards the centre of this section so we get a shape like that. I'm going to rotate my paper for this one and then we're going to do exactly the same here. And you can see why I've got these curling over or going straighter at the top it's because it gives me a nice place here to connect the points of my five of my starfish now my this one has got quite rounded points but it'd be easy to change how broad i make these region you know the, the points on this one to make it perhaps a little pointier and a little less, um, you'd need a sharper angle here. But play around with it, see what happens. And I am going to pop um, a circle here. And I think I'll pop some lines in, just straight lines or straightish lines towards the centre. If they bend a bit, that's fine. And I think for this variation, because I really like putting these leaf shapes in them. I just think this is just so lovely. And it is a lot like a sand dollar, but it's also a starfish. But you get starfishes starfish is this kind of shape which I really enjoy. If I show you the steeper version that perhaps would look less like a sand dollar and more like a starfish perhaps. I'm going to make this this line a bit wider as well so I have got more space for this and I'm going to draw in quite sharp shapes like this. I say sharp, they're steep at the beginning and end so they look more like U's and I'm leaving a space between them 
on either side of my pencil line because I'll then be able to go back. Oh, I can't, can't pick my paper up today even. So I can go back now and join them. And in this instance, I'm going to join them with a bit more of a pointy end. Not sharply pointy. Still a bit of a roundedness there, but much sharper than this one. And again, it's not brilliant, but it's all a start. And um, perhaps for this one, I'll put the dividing sections between the legs because perhaps that will suggest we've actually got legs here rather than anything else. And I'm just going to make the end here just that little bit thick. I'm just adding basically a V shape here, curvy V, with a pen that I should really shouldn't be using to do that because it's a bit too thick and worn. This one hasn't got much life left in it. But it's yeah. and no doubt we'll still use it because it's still fine. So let's do another one and get something that perhaps looks a bit more like a traditional starfish. And again, this is a case of I'm going to this time bend sort of like. having this curved shape here so we've got more of a curved leg on the starfish it's easier to draw this in one motion so it is a kind of v-shape and you get that smoother connection at the bottom it's fairly easy to connect the ends here but I always find this one can look a bit awkward and with practice, you could end up drawing these in one line. In practice, with practice, perhaps. I don't, I still draw them like this. So I'm going to pop some patterns in. So I'm going to put the centre in. I think what I'm going to do here is I think I'm going to take from just above these legs and put some. I say just above these legs, what I mean is from the centre to just above the curve here where the, the leg becomes a distinct leg, I'm going to put some chevron shapes in and then I'm going to turn them into perhaps some bands, we can add some colour in or pattern in, like so. And perhaps I will then just split this, in this case, in that way. Looks a bit like a snow, snowflake, snow crystal. But it's all good fun. I like that. So, another one. I think we can squeeze another one in on the end. We've got some fairly chunky legs on this one, so I'm going to put a smaller circle that we're going to use to draw these legs on so we get thin legs. You see here the circle we used was almost as big as the original circle. This is where we draw the, the bottom of the legs, as it were, the curve between them. This one was a bit closer, and we're gradually getting more and more towards the star shape and a leg shape. And um, so that's quite fun. I will, I think, just pop that in there. I know, I'm aware that if I was to put some patterns in here, I could turn that easily into a sea urchin. I'm resisting the urge at the moment though, just at the moment. Let's have a look. Um, okay. 
starfish often have wavy legs. So the way to do wavy legs is I'm just going to put some marks for five legs around the circle and I'm just going to use those to draw a shape I might want a wavy leg in. And some of them will be a bit longer and I'm fine with that. And I'm going to try to follow the shape like so. And get the leg so it becomes narrower and to a point. Like this, I'm just going to turn this so I can draw this one more easily. And don't get hung up on exactly following the pencil shape. It's only there as a guide to help you curve these legs and give them some shape. Just pop that in there, that there. And there we are, we've got a nice wavy starfish. So I think I'm just going to pop. I quite like this idea of chevrons. There is just something nice about this. It clues us into, there's a leg here. It helps to start to add a bit of dimension. But it also gives us a really good place to divide the rest of the leg. Half, I say we. You can fill these with any patterns that you wish or desire. So we've got that. Let's have a look at another. Oh, I'll tell you what I was going to do. I'll do this here. Is that all my starfish look pretty flat. But if we want them to look a bit more rounded, put the centre off centre as it were so I've moved this one up and then we can really curve our legs. I'm going to stick with simple curves here. No no wibbly wobblies, the wibbly wobblies will work and I am going to pop another circle in just to give me a guide of where my legs are going to finish so let's have a look at yeah I'll just keep this shape fairly simple here we ended up with it all sorts there but that'll work, I think. And when we put some, perhaps some central lines in. That helps to shape the legs as well. So we've got something that's a bit of an odder shape. I'm never quite sure about this. I tend to draw mine fairly flat. I do have to say that. Okay. The other thing that you can do with these is this is another way of drawing sand dollars or sea urchins. Is that we can start with these legs or the five pointed shape. And I think I will put these leaf shapes in again. Because I just find these, well, I just like them. I think it just reminds me of flowers, perhaps. But how do we know why we like a shape? I just do. Why do I like spirals? I just do. Because they spirals and I like spirals. How do we know? I don't know. I just do. And I tend to be fascinated with spirals, it has to be said. Okay, so what I can do here is I'm going to pop a circle in between each of these leaf shapes around that outside ring and then I'm going to draw shapes that follow the circle but bend inwards a bit at the leaf shape so we're getting some structure here 
like this. And then there's all kinds of things we could do here. I could put a, let's put a, a column or a row of other beads in. Because you often get these on the sea urchins, don't you, where you have these kinds of bead-like um, things, things there. And if we want to, just put a, a dot in towards the top, as if there's a little hole in it, which there often is, because in sea urchins that's where those pointy, hard hairs stick out. So that gives, I think I will just put a line in here because I haven't made them wide enough to be able to easily draw a smaller leaf shape in. I could if I picked up my finer pen. So it's basically this, but these connected in a different way. So remember with this one, I connected I drew this pattern first and then draw, drew the leaves in. Well, there's no reason why. Now, having done this, that I can't draw the the lines of my um, starfish in, and perhaps the shape I want these to be. That's a really uneven circle, but I'm going to work with it and see what happens. And there we go. It's a bit off centre, but it's fine. That's a bit that's a bit wavier than I wanted. I just wanted almost like a, a simple dip down but it'll be fine and then we can just I say we I keep saying we because it is a we if you want it to be a we or a you or an I and there we are so something similar to this but we got there in a slightly different way and that's fine. So there we are, we've got some sea urchins. What about some of these lovely oystery shapes that I had? Okay, or mussel shapes. I'm going to give one today. I'll come back and do some more shells another time. But I'm going to start with a teardrop shape, but I'm going to give it so the end is going to curl over just a little bit. So it's getting towards a paisley kind of pattern. And then I am going to start here and just draw in some shapes to create bands on it, a bit like you'd see on mussel shells. Just that little bit at the end there. I think I may want to actually extend this because that looks a bit odd with this, the line like that, which you can do. So that's a nice shape. I like that one. Another simple version of these would be to Draw a quite rounded triangle. It looks like a guitar plectrum, but again, we can do the same thing where we can add bands across it, like so. And then they're perfect for adding pattern to as well. So just a couple of really simple shapes there. Yeah, I think we'll leave it at that for today. Perhaps I'll add another one of these. So this one, that shape, perhaps bent a little. It doesn't matter where you decide to put these shapes. I'm going to put mine here.
we want these more or less parallel to the one at the end so I've had to widen these so th this side the gaps between the lines are wider than this side um, I could erase my pencil lines but I'm not going to because there's no need generally here I'm just going to put a dot in the middle and I think I may give myself Perhaps a border here around the edge because in that border I can do things. Um, you'll see me use this time and time again. There are patterns that I love to use to fill shapes in or spaces in. And I go to them often. They're not the only things, only ones I use. But I, I think we all have our favourite, or we all develop our own favourite kinds of filler patterns and textures. And they're a go-to thing, and ones we're comfortable with drawing or putting in. And they become kind of our signature then. So if you like using the ones I'm doing, that's fine. But I will use other ones from time to time, and that's fine too. And have a look around at patterns around you. Look at tanglepatterns.com, for example. The tangle patterns there that are broken down into simple steps. Things that are textured. And work out which ones you particularly like. And then here I'm using these perks because I just think it will be quite nice. It may not end up that way. I may look at this and go, I wish I hadn't done that. And I'm beginning to feel that at the moment. But I then have something to remind me when I look back for ideas in my sketchbook. Um, actually I don't like that or it may be that in the future I'll go yeah I really like that that was a good idea after all and make use of it again you'll see me use a few that I tend to go back to time and time again but it does depend what I'm drawing. So if I'm drawing arches, because arches do tend to feature a lot, arches and columns feature a lot in my whimsical colouring pages and things I do just for fun, then there are patterns I often use in those that I particularly like. I'm going to sneeze, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. We've got warm and sunny weather, which means that pollen is high. And it's early morning, so the early morning flowers that open and spread their pollen far and wide are releasing them, and the trees are still in bloom, or continuing to bloom. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. And I've actually I haven't taken my antihistamine and stuff this morning yet that'll be my next job once this is uploading so I've put I've put a ring in here and I think I might just add that and I'm going to I'm adding lines in those other sections to add a bit of darkness there and that these edges where I add these lines in to leave some blank space I like to do that between areas of pattern I just feel that it finishes things off. And the other thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the, the line and I'm going to add a little bit of a border here and I'm going to leave these a little, you see how I've left a little chink out so I'm not trying to match these lines up I want to leave that little gap there
like that. So I've gone from something that was vaguely like, I say vaguely, very vaguely like this to this with just a couple of simple steps. And I know, it, I, I know I make things look easy, it's, you know, but they really can be that easy. It just depends on the approach you take and just doing, trying to do things one step at a time. And of course, practicing pen skills for hand-eye coordination, muscle memory as well, is important to get consistent results. And my hands are particularly wobbly to begin with this morning. And I have been drawing, so there's no excuse. Here I'm going to do this kind of shape. Um, I'm auroring in entangled terms these little sections here to create oops I didn't want to join it to the center one that's fine because all I'll do with the others is I'll just draw lines that start up there's always ways of making things appear the same and do you know what with this I've got a great feeling of deja vu as if I've done these before I don't think I have though but I just think this is just lovely and I th I'm going to add some stripes in this I think I think I'll put three lines across the middle because you've got that point there that corner and it would be just feel awkward if I only did two I think perhaps not perhaps it would be fine But I've now got that ring going on there and I think I'm going to just add lines like this that I draw the centre line in and one on either side. And here I'm letting that density of line at the point do the job of adding shadow and dimension. I can add more shadow. I've got enough space in that one to put a couple more lines. So don't be afraid to add more lines if it keeps things looking a bit more consistent in the density of line. That one I actually quite like now. I didn't like it to begin with. I found the shape very awkward. But I like that. Okay, what about these? Well, I think here I'm going to repeat these down to the point, quite fine. And then once I've done that, what I'm going to do, I think, is the tangle pattern jonquil here. Oh. The idea of it, sort of like um, for a checkerboard kind of an affair, because I think that could be quite fun. And it would also help to add a feeling of rising and falling of dimension in these shapes as well. They look like they really do look a bit like um, strange snowflakes here today. But I'm happy with that. Okay, I don't know why I turned that round. I could have just worked on the first one. So I'm going to fill this one in black. And this one, fill one in black. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Terrible. Okay, let's keep going. You really do get this live and as I do things. The thought of stopping a video and editing it or stitching bits together today it's just not going to be done it's Saturday it's a lovely day outside and um, life is a bit too short sometimes for thinking about doing all those edits and I quite enjoy watching videos myself where crafters makers just spend some time crafting and drawing 
with you real time with the mistakes left in or how you cope with things we go oh no that hasn't worked out okay what do i do how, how do i fix this what can i do to fix this and i think that's um i think it gives you a better idea of the process and as nice as it is to watch people with very slick videos um especially if their process is very long you know I, i'm trying to stick to less than an hour for most of my videos um, it'd be nice if i could stick to half an hour for most of them which was my plan today but i've already gone over that um then oops look at that that was an oops moment but i will leave it as it is because at the end of it all nobody will really notice just got a very thin one there so so we've got that and i think i'm going to what can i do with these here because these shapes here just look a bit odd that's what i'll do And I worked out from the first one, it would be a lot easier if I start that chevron shape that I want at the top and work my way down. And with these, I am not worrying about how many lines. I've got exactly the same line in each section and creating a pattern. Ooh, I just heard a bumbly bee go by. Must be a big one to make such a big noise. I hope it doesn't fly in one of my windows. I'm not scared of them, I'm scared of hurting them. And so I want to, you know, having them panicked and scared. And so I want to get them out as quickly as I can. So there we go with that one. This one's a bit of an odd looking one. But I think I can do something about this as well. I think having those lines there just helps. And I think colour will come in to help with that one. This one, I think I may just pop in, not chevrons, but perhaps just some stripes here. And I may actually colour these in black. And I'm, I'm looking at which way they're pointing. They're curving towards the centre. So here I can make the ones I add to this leg curve towards the centre. And here again too, and perhaps here. And I'm not worried that there are more stripes on some legs and fewer on others. It is what it is. But what I am going to do is I'm going to leave. Shall I leave a bit of sparkle? No, because that that will be that will make it an awkward place with that line going through as well. So. My head's just worked out how I could do it, but um, I'm just going to do it this way for now. I like graph, very graphic lines as well. I do like black. Every now and again, I dabble with the idea of using no harsh lines, no black lines, no solid lines, and see what happens, and I just don't like it. <laughs> I just don't feel it's me. Um, let's have a look here. I'm going to make this ring perhaps a bit wider, put another circle in there. And then perhaps we can add another ring around here and thicken that as if the pattern's carrying on. So we've got a very stripy one there. These, um, this one here, I think all I'm going to do with this one is just pop some circles there and perhaps a line coming from it. I haven't got much space to work with, so I'm just going to make it simple. I'll leave that one as it is for now. These have these lovely bands in them that we can do so much with. So this one I'm going to... add these arch shapes, these curves, 
I am going to fill the sections with black. Again, it's that very graphic nature that I like. If you don't like it, don't do it. Use colour or texture to do something with those sections. But I like I like the black, I like the graphic nature of it. The high contrast. I'm just going to pop smaller versions of those little U shapes in there. And then I can do the same perhaps in each of these rows. Or I could do something different. Here I'm going to do the same for this one. And yep, that end one has ended up narrower, but that's fine. I can live with that. Again, I'm just making sure I've got the very graphic black here. And I'll pop these in, but this time I think I'll just do them as thicker lines. It'd be awkward for me to get a space like this that I could add colour to or texture. Now this one I could do the same or I could do something different. I think I'll do the same simply because it would be nice to see. So again, this is one of my favourite patterns, but feel free to use your own here. Anyone who knows me knows I've got a bit of a thing for the tweed and um, Shattuck as well, and some various others. Diva Dance is one of my favourites. I like, um, there's one called Sand Swirl that I like. But also when I'm using when we're using bands, because essentially these are ribbons or bands, then you can use any kind of pattern, even the more geometric ones that are based on squares or triangles. So if I take this one here, I'm going to start in the center. So I can split that up into boxes. And then I can I'm going to put these half leaf shapes along the top and bottom and the edges and they become full leaf shapes then where these lines are like so and I'm going to pop a spot in the middle and I'm going to do well I think this one's called well I'm almost positive it is so there's S shapes that go this in the same direction all the way around. I just do them in opposites because there's a rhythm to it for me. And I like to work with things that have a rhythm. So we can do shapes, you know, patterns like this. Here, I think I'm going to do I'm going to do the curved version of Shattuck. So I've curved my line here and I'm going to work backwards towards the end there. Then I'm going to zigzag this here and I'm going to work backwards from that line, like so with parallel lines. Draw the next line. You can put all of the zigzagginess in first, but I sometimes get confused as to which way the lines need to go. So working it like that ends up, it just makes a bit more sense. And this one here, what could I pop in there? I think here I might just put in some lines that get closer and closer together. In that kind of op art kind of way, the optical art, where you've got the use lines and patterns to create that feeling of dimension and play with optical illusions. So that's fun. I think it will it will be much better with the addition of colour and perhaps some more shadow to bring things out. 
Um, just looking at the time, 45 minutes. This one, what I'm going to do here is for this one, I'm going to continue to add versions of it to spill, to spill, to fill that space up like so. And then here, I'm going to add a little spiral in like this but I'm going to create it as if it's you know wire wrapping in jewellery almost like we've got a wire or some such wrapped around here and I quite like that and to set to, to build up a separation here of, of um, one side of this and another I'm going to pop a little bead in I think so that'll be really lovely get the sh shadows there and then we can do the same for each section Again, get the shadows around that little section off there and perhaps there and then I can add another little bead there so I've reversed the direction my spirals are going here and here so I'll do the same with this one so this one I draw down and around so I'm going to go down and around this way and back Again, make the bottom and the left thicker. Put a little bead in here. So this one I came from the top down. So here I'm going to go from the bottom up. And I'm not going to put a bead in with this one. It's just not enough space. But I can just pop that band in. So it's got a feeling of something that's been wire wrapped so that's an interesting one if i just do something with this one here the spirals i could add them to either side like this and i'm just allowing them to i'm not worried about connecting them and leaving a gap here if I get them sort of as if they're woven or overlapping that's fine I'll just do the same with each section and then it becomes part of the pattern as long as you repeat what you do so I, I did forget to leave that gap to join them together but as long as I do the same for each and every section it forms that pat a pattern and so it's consistent across the whole well weird weird starfish Some issues drawing my spirals there there we go so page full of some starfish and a couple more shells mussel shells or variations on mussel shells um with some zentangle patterns in but just really really simple some zentangle some not some just lines some shapes split up but just creating patterns by repeating the same thing around a shape that is well, it is symmetrical in its own way. So I'm going to say thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this. I do hope you'll give this a go. No colour because that's 50 minutes of drawing. And um, you can play with colour and shadow yourself. No doubt if I spend some time with this, which I'm likely to do while the video is processing and uploading and stuff. And I'm waiting for deliveries of pens and stuff today. Just don't ask. I get through pens at a fast rate of knots. I'm heavy handed, 
sometimes the paper I use is particularly rough and it wrecks them quickly and often wrecks them before the you know before the inks run out the nib is wrecked but I try to keep them going for as long as I can but um so I'm not sure whether um, they're supposed to be delivered today I had notification they would be um, but it's bank holiday here in the UK so things go awry on bank holidays at times but anyway I hope you have a go at doing this find some time just to sit down with pen and paper and just have a go what's the worst thing that happens you don't like what you've done but you've enjoyed the process and you know, I've got weird stuff here. I mean, that is particularly a bizarre looking thing. But I don't know, it looks looks like some alien creature that might clamp on your face. Um, possibly. Or on your body, like a weird five-legged leech. I don't like leeches, and that one's a bit odd. But some of the others I really like. I like this one. I'd like to work with this one again on something that's got a neater shape to it. Because that is a bit of a bizarre shape. But it's sketchbook. This actually would be lovely. Done as a sea urchin. If I'm correct, sea urchins and starfish belong to the same family and they all have um, a fivefold symmetry or multiples of five, if I'm correct. And um, that's why they often look similar and it's easy to interchange them. This one, see I wasn't, I was going to finish, but now this one needs this. I don't like the way those zigzags just finish abruptly. So I'm going to give them an edge to neaten it all up. That looks better, that feels better to me. This, this may just be an Angela thing. I'm going to try doing the same here. See, I was going to finish. I do this every single time. Have you noticed? It's almost like suddenly I look at things and I go, oh, that'll be a good idea. And that's why you need to walk away from artwork before you decide it's finished. Or... You leave things be and go back. Now that feels a bit better. And I think that if I give this something underneath it, as if there's a rock that it's stuck to, then that might look a bit better. There we go. And perhaps some holes in my rock or perhaps it is just another weird sea urchin but I don't know I think it's a space rock with a space alien on it um this one would benefit from the same kind of things I think I'll give it a go I think I'll do the same here as I did with another one where I perhaps leave a little knock at the end of the the leg perhaps that looks a bit better I know it's most probably you might go no I preferred it the other way around that's fine but I have to live with my artwork. <laughs> so I am going now, honestly. Um, I hope you give this some of these things a go. And as you've seen, it's sketchbook work. So you do something, you don't know what to do. You put it to one side. Or you're not sure why you don't like it. You put it to one side. And then you look back and you think, ah, oh, now I know what to do. And you just do it. And the worst thing that happens is you don't like what you add. Well, in that case, you've learned something. And... But you may this has made a, a nice difference i want to make that this look more dimensional so it's going to be shadow the use of shadow i'm going to thicken lines and so on but i'm not going to do that here and now so watch out because if i do much more work i'll post this on social social media so you can see what i've done how i finished it um and look after yourselves find time to be creative 
and enjoy the weekend. Sunday tomorrow, Sunday's no videos. That's if you watch this on a Saturday. So, take care. Bye-bye for now.